Hello students, a very warm welcome to the class once again. I hope you are enjoying learning physics and you are practicing problems. Last class, I discussed about Werner caliper and I told you about how Werner caliper increases the precision level compared to a meter scale. A meter scale had a precision level of 0.1 cm and a Werner caliper had a precision of 0.01 cm. Now suppose if you want some more better precision up to 3 decimal places, then we can use micro screw meters that is the first one is screw gauge now see you can see in your physics laboratory a screw gauge looks something like this you can see it is a u-shaped stud and here we have a spindle which can actually move towards this part so that it can stick to this part and here we can fix an object if i use an object whose length is to be measured here it can be fixed between this spindle and between this point. Now see there are two scales on screw gauge as we have in the vernier scale like we have a main scale and we have a vernier scale on a vernier caliper. Here we have two scale, one main scale and one circular scale. Normally if you see a screw gauge in your physics laboratory, you will find there are 100 divisions or in some there will be 50 divisions also. Now basically you will see that here the calibration will be done in millimeter. So here you will find on main scale the calibration is done in millimeter. Now how do we take readings using a screw gauge? First of all let me give you a description. Actually what we have, we have a bolt kind of arrangement here. Here we have a bolt kind of arrangement. It will look something like this. You can see here a bolt kind of arrangement. Something like this, you must have seen here whenever you are using a bolt and a nut to wind over, uh, over the nut a bolt, you can see something like this and it continues and so on. You must have observed this. Now you can see here as you make the turnings, as you perform the turnings, you will find that as you do the windings then in the forward direction this part will start moving towards left now as it moves for each turning let us say it will move this much distance you can see for each turning let's say for one complete turn it comes in the forward direction this much distance this is also known as pitch of screw gauge. I will also give it this detailed description, don't worry, but have an idea. This is the spindle which is actually moving and due to the crack arrangement or let's say due to the uh, bolt kind of arrangement, here it will move and this part, the linear distance traveled for one complete turn that is known as the pitch. Now actually what happens, what you do? Now when you are going to use the screw gauge, again let's come to this part, we are not using any object. So you will take the screw gauge, this scale with this part, you can rotate it, you can see this can be rotated. Now as you rotate, this part will go forward in the forward direction and when it is about to touch each other, about to touch it, you will find that the zero of the circular scale will coincide with this line. Sometimes what happens due to a uh, human error, let's say due to the error in the instruments, what happens as we have moved forward but we don't stop instantly, we might continue rotation. So try to avoid that, that will bring a backlash error in our reading. So try to avoid that. So try to see, you just slow down the way you are turning and let this part get stick here. Now generally I told you, this case, this zero of circular scale will coincide with this baseline or the main scale zero line. Let's go further. How can we take reading using a screw gauge? Now what you do? Again, open the screw gauge. I mean that spindle should be brought towards right. Fix the object. Remember, I am telling regularly one thing. Don't overturn. I mean, once you have fixed, don't try to turn it more. That will bring an error in our reading. So don't try to uh, turn it more. Bring the object, fix it. Now you have to start taking readings. Prior to that, to know the exact value of the reading, to know the exact length of the object that you are trying to find out, let us try to understand some basic things that are required to use a screw gauge. Now you are having the idea about the pitch. 
See here. Generally, there are 100 divisions on circular scale. Generally, there are 100 divisions on circular scale. Somewhere it is also given as 50 divisions. Don't, don't worry about that. 100 divisions on circular scale. This would be provided. Now, you have to take care how are we going to how are we going to find out the basic detail so that we can take the measurement now comes what about the main scale i told you while using the main scale main scale calibration sometime it is done in millimeter calibration will be done in millimeter so you note down it is calibrated in millimeter calibration in mm so we can say that the minimum reading that a main scale can we can have that will be 1 mm so i am writing here minimum separation between two divisions that will be equal to 1 mm minimum separation between two divisions on main scale that is equal to 1 mm now you'll be having the idea now see what we are going to do Suppose you are you have not kept the object within the stud within the jaws. Whenever you are going to make the rotation, for one complete rotation, you have to check how much linear distance the main scale traverses. That is known as pitch of the main scale. Now please note this. That is pitch. It is the linear distance traveled on the main scale when you are rotating completely the circular scale. It is the linear distance traversed by the main scale linear distance traversed or moved or moved on the main scale linear distance moved on the main scale moved on the main scale for one complete rotation for one complete rotation what i mean to say here in general if you make one complete rotation that is what you do you see here you see in this scale you see here initially keep this zero of circular scale coinciding with this baseline rotate it now this this scale will start rotating you can see here this scale will start rotating as you rotate as you rotate this zero when again it coincides you just check how much linear distance it moves ahead how much linear distance it moves ahead this linear distance will be known as pitch of the screw gauge so here normally you will find that generally or normally you will find that pitch will be equal to 1 mm okay it will find that you will move only 1 mm for one complete rotation so that means you have moved 100 divisions on the circular scale but linearly you have moved only 1 mm now let's come to the next part that is how will you know the least count of the instrument and i told you what is least count least count is the minimum precision that the reading can be taken with an instrument now see here the next part is least count least count is divided is given as the ratio of pitch with the number of divisions on circular scale so least count of screw gauge it is different in definition it's different compared to the one year caliper that we have done least count in case of screw gauge it is the it is the actually it is ratio of pitch with the number of divisions on circular scale number of divisions on circular scale okay now you can easily evaluate the pitch of sorry the least count of the screw gauge for example in our case for example least count of screw gauge you can find it out least count is equal to pitch pitch i told you linear distance travels that was 1 mm and in our case the circular scale had 100 divisions so you can keep it as 100 least count will come out to be 0 0.01 mm what we get that it can take the reading up till a precision of 0 0.01 mm and in terms of centimeter this can be written as 0 0.001 centimeter if you remember in the vernier caliper case 
the least count was 0.01 cm. In the middle scale case, it was 0.1 cm. Here, screw gauge, we have more precision. Three places of decimal. Three places of decimal, we can find out the reading. Next, this was example of a general screw gauge. Some screw gauge has only have only 50 division on circular scale. So this is uh, one more example. Suppose you have 50 division on, on circular scale and each one division on main scale is equal to 0.5 mm. Suppose some screw gauge have one main scale division, one main scale division is equal to 0.5 mm. Okay. And there are only 50 divisions on circular scale and there are 50 divisions on circular scale. Why? By this what we mean? By this we mean that if you make one complete rotation of the spindle or let's say of the circular scale, if you make one complete rotation, you will traverse only 0.5 mm and the least count will be least count will be equal to pitch I told you it will be pitch and number of divisions number of divisions on circular scale just now I have told you just use this formula pitch pitch I told you it was the linear distance traversed by with one complete rotation that is 0.5 mm in some screw gauge and there are 50 divisions on circular scale use it 50 you will get 0.01 mm again you can check it you will get 0.01 mm again so again for this least for this screw gauge also we have the same least count that is 0.01 mm or 0.001 centimeter so you can note down that so now you are having the idea of the calibration or let's say up till what precision the screw gauge can take the reading the next part if you remember in the case of vernier caliper i also talked about error uh, sorry i also talked about zero error and in that sometimes zero error was there was no zero error sometimes it was negative sometimes it was positive here also in this case also there might be some zero error initially in the instrument see how we can measure the zero error i hope you have got how to calculate the least count so whenever a problem comes no need to by heart anything if you know how to find out the least count with the given data in the question you can find out the least count of the instrument. Now comes the zero error. I told you all to find zero error, you have to rotate the scale and bring these two parts. You can see here, bring these two parts sticking to each other or let's say touching to each other. To so see here, how are we going to find out the zero error? First thing, what you do, bring bring both the parts both the parts of this spindle touching each other so bring i will call that part as studs bring both parts of spindle touching each other bring both parts of spindle touching each other now what will you do you will see some you will check actually the zero where it lies touching each other See here, as you are performing the experiment, when you have brought, I told you all, this zero has to coincide with the baseline. If this is the case, first thing we are going to study, no zero error. See how the screw gauge will look like, no zero error case. In this one, suppose this is the main scale. This is the main scale. 1 mm is the separation and let's say this is the circular scale. This is the circular scale which I am drawing here. Here, let me make the calibration and let me say that this is the, you can see here, let's say this is the 0 of the circular scale. Here, this is the 0 of circular scale. These are the calibration done and let's say here we have up till 100 division. So here I will be having the 95th division. Okay, and so on. So here you find that the zero of the circular scale is meeting here or no, no need to make such, such large. 
we can say this is the zero okay so that you'll be having the idea now you see that zero of this and this zero and this zero are coinciding so there will be no zero error this zero has to stick here there will be no zero error in this instrument in this screw gauge now sometimes what happens when you are going to turn the spindle you'll find that this zero before reaching here it will stop somewhere beneath it will stop somewhere beneath in that case how it will look like no zero error i have told you let's come to the second part that is positive zero error already you must be having the idea about the positive zero error that we have learned in the case of one caliper so positive zero error now you see again in the diagram this is the main scale okay let's say this is the zero that is visible and this we have the circular scale here the zero lies somewhere here okay hope it's uh, understandable by you all you can understand with the diagram i'm drawing a small diagram only the scales i'm drawing so that you may have the idea of what we are talking about you see here the zero of the circular scale is beneath this baseline beneath the baseline and the zero on the main scale is visible and the zero on the main scale is visible such and now we will say there is zero error in the instrument such a zero error will be positive zero error i'm mentioning zd that is positive zero error and the zero error is measured what you see do you see which number of division is coinciding with the baseline here you can see it is the fifth division it's one two three or let's say it's fourth division you can say it's fourth division that's coinciding so the zero error will be plus the nth division the fourth division here first i'm writing the general n into lc that is the least count here it is the case is fourth division into least count least count i'm taking in general that is 0 0.001 centimeter that will be equal to 4 into 0 0.001 centimeter that will come out to be 0 0.004 centimeter this is the positive zero error in this screw gauge that i have shown you with this diagram what about if you if we have we are go on rotating and we find that this zero over comes this baseline and it stops somewhere at the top of the baseline then we are going to have a negative zero error see how we are going to check that i will draw a diagram that will be here the third part that is the negative zero error hope that is visible to you all and you all can clearly can specify the difference between positive and negative zero error negative zero error not too tough to understand we have scales the main scale and the circular scale now what i'm saying i said that sometimes the circular scale will overshoot the baseline this is the baseline it will overshoot so what will happen this zero will be the zero of the circular scale will be somewhere at the top and let's say the 95th division is coinciding with the baseline and here i'm not marking zero here i have not marked zero because the zero on the main scale will be hidden it will be hidden so i'm writing here zero of main scale will be hidden zero of main scale is hidden so in that case you will say it has overshot it is it has overshoot the baseline so we will go we are going to have the negative zero error in this case it will be we are going to have negative zero error negative zero error and that is equal to that is equal to how much now see again i told you in the case of negative zero error be very cautious while evaluating negative zero error you will be thinking that make it 95 into least count no that is not the result it is not 95 into least count this is actually equal to minus of num total number of divisions on the circular scale that is n minus nth coinciding division that is the nth coinciding division on